Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to Is Self-Respect Important? So I was thinking to myself, my West, my Western mind first came up, basically my mind prior to doing these things. I would say, yes, very much so. But as I think about it in terms of learning a lot of the Eastern philosophy and with my new ideas, no to a degree. And what I mean by this is that you don't need to worry yourself about self-respect if you do what you think is right. You don't have to worry about, oh, is this gonna is this gonna do no good or or is it gonna do good for me? You know, you just you don't worry about that kind of stuff. And hopefully, you know, be mindful of people of course that are out to get you. So if you do things in good conscience, if you do things wisely, not intellectually necessarily, but with uh wisdom in mind. <laughs> so I consider intelligence, uh, I, don't, I forget how Sadhguru puts it, but I think it says intellect. Intelligence as in book smarts, you know, and wisdom as in street smarts, kind of like where you, you can pick up on cues, you can, you learn the, the hard way, you know, or you learn through watching people, or observing people, as opposed to a intelligence where you, you read it in a book, and um, and that's basically it. Practice by practicing something is wisdom. Reading in a book is intelligence, in my in my view. It's always good to have both. Absolutely, one over the other. If I were to cho have to choose one, it's going to be wisdom. But I'd rather have both and a good balance to be smart and to know what to to read out. But anyways, self respect important. Well, you don't really need to worry about that if so long as you're doing things, you know knowing that you're doing things to the best of your abilities, to the best of your knowledge, and for good intentions, you don't really have to worry about it, I think. I don't know how this is going to go, so let's go ahead and see what he has to say. Ego and self-respect, they are quite different concepts. Ego is simply, I exist, I am, I am. And because you just cannot be without being anything thing therefore ego completes the statement i am by saying i am a male i am a student i am a professional i am wise i am smart i am handsome i am distressed i am suffering i am happy huh? Th these are uh, all ego statements i am x i am y i am z all this is the ego now, what is self respect it's a very hazy thing what is respect if uh, uh, respect means to value, if, if the real meaning of respect is that you value someone highly, then uh, uh, the process of respect involves two things. One, you must know what to value. Secondly, obviously the object must deserve that value or have that value. Hmm? So, do I really know what is important? And the moment I say, do I really know who, <laughs> what is important? I'm referring to the ego, right? Because the I is the ego. So, does the ego really know what is important? No. One very central defining characteristic of the ego is that to the ego only the ego is important. Because the ego is false and little and insecure, it just does not have the courage to give anything beyond itself much importance. In some way or the other, directly or obliquely, the ego accords importance only to itself. I am important. If I am important, then those who are related to me will become important. If I am important, then my thoughts will become important, my imagination will become important, my ideas will become important. My country will become important, my, my clan will become important, my past will become important, my dreams and my desires will become important. All these are ego statements and all these are founded on the mother statement, I alone am important, that is ego. I alone am important, the ego just cannot see beyond itself. So whenever the ego gives respect to something, what is it that the ego is respecting? 
nothing but itself because the ego has no capacity to truly appreciate anything beyond itself that requires courage and that requires clarity the ego has neither courage nor clarity are you getting it so when you say self respect that merely means that you are looking at your reflection in the mirror and admiring it <laughs> and irrespective of how you really are or how you look that's the way several people are don't you know irrespective of the position they are taking they keep backing their position irrespective of uh, how foolish their concepts or ideas or dreams or targets are they keep chasing their dreams that's self respect a mark of stupidity hmm? if i am not mistaken the word respect comes from <coughs> the ability to look cleanly and clearly at something hmm uh, i think the root word is picure so re looking at something again that's respect looking at uh, something again and again with the intention to come to the truth that's respect respect does not mean offering value to something without even knowing the value i never really thought about looking at the word respect uh well, i guess I, i should give how i see self respect is i because me you know me saying at the very beginning what it is or is it important to say yes well what does it mean to me because sometimes we have slightly def a, a different definition of respect or the words in general So self-respect to me is how I've understood it is um not putting yourself in a position where you can get disrespected I believe. So I guess an example would be that uh, an example of that would be to put you Hold on, I'm going to pause and think about this real quick. Actually, I didn't have to pause it for too long. Self-respect to, to put yourself in a good light. that's self respect because if you say i'm going to give someone respect that you're going to you're not going to you're not going to diss them you're not going to talk bad about them you're going to but mind you it has to be earned though so respect well it doesn't have to be earned it could be earned but it also could be from fear i guess respect as in you're fearful of something So you respect that fear, even though it's not a good way to look at it. Someone could be chivalrous and helpful and kind. You can respect that. You can respect fear and goodness, bad and the good. So I guess self-respect at that point could mean just putting yourself in a good light, whether that means through fear or something good. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Wow, I should, I should think about these things a little bit more, but it's generally speaking in a good light, putting yourself in a good light so that people can respect you and that you respect yourself. No, I guess it doesn't really matter what other people think. It's just putting yourself in such a way that you respect yourself. Regardless of what other people think, that's self-respect. Now, getting respect from other people, you have to put yourself in a good light for them to respect you. So, self-respect is just putting yourself in a good light on what you think is good for you. for example an elder comes to your uh, place the elder happens to be not merely an elder but an elder relative and you have been taught to offer respect have you not been no mm. so the fellow has come and you do not know the <coughs> fellow you do not know how virtuous he is you do not know how courageous or loving he is and yet you are supposed to offer respects <coughs> <coughs> right the fellow comes in and you offer some salutation hmm you greet him by saying sir or namaste or welcome or something now that's the way of the ego it does not know 
itself therefore it does not know what to respect to know the other first of all you must know yourself correct before you can tell how beautiful uh, somebody's eyes are you must have the eyes to look at his eyes right but the way of the ego is that it just cannot look it has beliefs but no vision it has dreams but no reality so it respects out of bias or tradition or influence it does not respect that is it does not uh, evaluate based on merit or clarity are you getting it but it can though right it's just to say if you don't know someone then it is based on those things but it can be based on merit though question there i don't know if you well, let's see so just as you offer your respects to the other one in a in a, in a blind way okay. equally people keep respecting themselves or sometimes even disrespecting themselves in a blind way so self respect as a prerequisite needs self knowledge if i say i respect myself i must be asked <clears throat> who respects what you say you have self respect so that would mean you respect yourself correct then i must ask you who respects what you say i respect myself i'll say who respects what do you really know yourself <clears throat> hmm interesting um i'm wondering if you can partially know yourself as in the way i look at this now is i have ideas of how i act and talk to people and present myself to people i guess that's a good way to put it you know kindness greetings some respect <laughs> when i talk to people and those values and ideas is what i respect about myself so i'm not saying that i completely know myself 100% i doubt i ever would i don't know maybe i can someday i don't know but again irrelevant to whether i do or do not cuz you know thinking about that it's just wasting time but from what i do know about myself i can respect that i wonder if that's a legitimate a uh, claim to self respect i suppose or yeah self respect the things that i know that i that i do i can respect there can be no self respect without self knowledge and we have been repeatedly saying that the ego survives only in lack of self knowledge the less you know yourself the more dense and then crystallized your ego is self respect is nothing but self awareness the more you know yourself the more you you realize who you are not and that brings you to who you are hmm? that is real self respect knowing oneself but knowing oneself is not a direct or positive process Mm -hmm. knowing oneself can happen only through the root of discarding all that which is not you this is not me this is not me you keep <clears throat> rejecting all that and that brings you to the real self and that is self respect basically that means that people who do not know themselves are the ones who greatly disrespect themselves and that is uh, uh, quite interesting because if someone comes and says a few abusive or coarse words to you you feel hurt you say the fellow disrespected me hmm? but this disrespect is nothing compared to the disrespect that we heap on ourselves by remaining ignorant of ourselves all life long you live for 80 years without without ever thinking deeply about yourself your life your relationships your dreams your hopes uh, your regrets your suffering your phobias 
you never think about these things and you and you live for an entire 80 years and then you die that's the deepest disrespect towards the self to not to know oneself hmm? and this disrespect towards the self is also called as ego because ego is another name for self illusion i do not know who i am yet i keep saying i am that's the ego and that's disrespect Now, uh, come to the next part of your question. What are you saying? Uh, I mean, sir, uh, why can't we just let it go when some, uh, when some people are in Okay, before we get that, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to, I want to go back to that part and then we'll watch again. <laughs> again, if you want to watch this uninterrupted without me talking, please go to the original video. It'll generally be in the description unless I did a mass update. Because if someone comes and says a few abusive or coarse words to you you feel hurt you say the fellow disrespected me this i wanted to say something to this too is the fact that if people can hurt you with words you clearly do not have uh how do i say you don't have knowledge of yourself i guess you don't know yourself because people saying words to you and you know who you are they will not affect you and this is something i've said before too about people who get offended with words i say that they're <coughs> they are a slave to the word if i say something and all of a sudden you get offended you are a slave to that word because you when i when that word is said you all of a sudden just get triggered so that that shows that you are you don't know your true self now and i'm speaking my true uh, uh, true self as in as in you as a human being how you act upon this world maybe not no well, i guess yeah not necessarily atman brahman self but even even a little bit below that i suppose i don't know how to phrase this one but as you as your <laughs> not your Atman self, maybe Jiv Atman, I believe. If, if, I think that's the right terminology. Even you don't even know that. <laughs> you 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 are because you don't know who you are. You're getting affected by every words out there, and whether that's true or not, or or should I say, if if it's not true, you're getting affected by it. Clearly, you don't know who you are. But if if it's true, then it shouldn't affect you because it's true. <laughs> Which means that if it's a bad thing and it's true, you need to change. <laughs> but if it's not true and it affects you, then you don't know who you are. But this disrespect is nothing compared to the disrespect that we heap on ourselves by remaining ignorant of ourselves all life long. You live for 80 years without, without ever thinking deeply about yourself, your life, your relationships, your dreams, your hopes, <coughs> you know, your regrets, your suffering, your phobias. You never think about these things and you, and you live for an entire 80 years and then you die. That's the deepest disrespect towards the self. Okay, so there, <coughs> that's the part I wanted to hear again. So it doesn't seem like he's talking about, I don't think the uh, Brahman Atman here is talking more along the lines of what I was saying just a few minutes ago. Like, I don't know what the, I don't know what to call it. Honestly, it's it's definitely not your true true self. Your your you know um, Brahman Atman. You know you you are you're clearly unaffected by all of those things. But in terms of the the body mind the mind, I guess that might be the better one. The mind you. Um, you could kind of see that as to the ego to a degree too, but the mind you that knows about how you act, the your phobias and your memories of the past and what you've done, he's saying that we, all the things that you've done and your memories, your phobias, if you never thought about that, that's the biggest disrespect. So you need to think about those things and I guess perhaps learn about them and see how you acted and to reflect upon how you treat people, how you disrespected or or maybe respected people to think about all those things even though it's a good thing just to make sure that it is I guess the best possible you but this goes more along the lines of the the mind and memories that you've had from my understanding 
I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm still kind of confused on how uh, Acharya here perceives like Brahman, Atman, and then you as an individual. It, I, th I believe he believes in the, the big I, which is Brahman, Atman, your true self. And then, of course, he over here talks about the little I, which is the ego. But the ego is the only thing that gets affected by your um, your phobias, your past life, your history. Whereas the big I of you is unaffected by those at all. It doesn't matter. You're never affected by it, but you just don't realize it. So you're stuck in the little I, which is this. So in this little I here, you're disrespecting yourself. So can you, I guess you can improve upon your ego. I, I've always heard of the ego as being bad, but can it also be good? But still, it's still the little I, it's still the ego, but it can be a good one. To not to know oneself. Hmm? And this disrespect towards the self is also called as ego. Because ego is another oh. name for self-illusion. I do not know who I am, yet I keep saying I am. That's the ego. And that's disrespect. <clears throat> now, uh, come to the next part of your question. What are you saying? Uh, I mean, sir, uh, why can't we just let it go when some, uh, when some people uh, intentionally or unintentionally hurt our so-called ego? Uh, I mean, when I try to let go of things and people who hurt uh, my ego and or self-respect, I observe that uh, after a period of time, people don't take you seriously and your opinions. I mean, I am little confused uh, in being a humble person or a person having attitude because uh, attitude makes you look confident and attractive and get you respect in this society. The important thing is, wait, 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 wait. The important thing is to first of all be assured of who you are and what you have. You must be confident of your own truth in the first place. I was gonna say, sorry. Uh, I want to try to get in this before he answers. I just, uh, just because I want to see how my answers compares. I would say, if which is essentially what uh, Acharya here uh, said, and I think I said I did say it a little bit earlier. So if you know who you are, you know what you have. If people say a lie, that shouldn't affect you because it's a lie. If it's the truth. That shouldn't affect you because it's the truth. So no matter what people say, it shouldn't affect you. <clears throat> Generally speaking, but I can understand like in terms of peer pressure, people can get like triggered and stuff or whatever the right word for it. I hate that word, <laughs> but who can get um, like upset that you lied to them? But by but by but by you showing that you're being triggered is exactly what they want. That's the whole point of them saying a lie in the first place. So, if they lie to you, and you get triggered, they just won. They did exactly what they wanted you to do. You did exactly what they wanted you to do. <laughs> but if it's a lie, you know it's a lie, you don't have to respond to that. You can work confidently. It's how you react to what they say shows whether it affected you or not. It's very hard to do. It, um, uh, I'm trying to think, it has affected me, and still it gets to me internally, but I don't show it. I, I, I understand why, why they're trying to do that, which is trying to offend me, but I don't show it. So I am a, f and but even though it technically offends me inside, they don't see it on their face. They don't get the pleasure of them seeing them offend me. And if it's the truth, well, you can't deny that. <laughs> Just own up to it, because again, they're trying to get you. They're trying to affect you in a way that they show that you you have a weakness. But if you own up to it, generally speaking, it's not a weakness anymore. Hmm. You are carrying a textbook 
of advanced calculus uh, and a class 4 student starts spitting at it and says this is all nonsensical and what is this integration sign is this some snake or something <laughs> uh, would you feel disrespected or humiliated dejected how would you feel I'd feel sorry for that person <laughs> But I would, I wouldn't bother. But if you yourself are like that uh, class four student, then your self-esteem will take a beating. Okay. You will say, "Oh my God, my book has been dishonored." Mm. How are they able to bother you with whatever they are doing? Huh? How are you not assured of what your truth is? And if you are assured, how can you take them seriously? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. A class 4 student who knows nothing about anything hmm, comes and starts debunking a PhD thesis. Should he be taken seriously, given some, some importance? No, sir, because he doesn't know about what he yeah, the thing is, do you know? Do you know of what you have, what you are saying, what you are? When you are, when you are assured of yourself, then what the world is saying it does not matter too much. <laughs> but when you are uh, yourself, half here, half there, uncertain, hmm? <laughs> then. Anybody can influence you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Humility, that's the word you used. Uh, should I be humble or should I not be humble? What is humility? Humility is about knowing when that your wrong. default identity is the ego. Uh. That's humility. Humility is to know how vulnerable to mistakes you are because that's the nature of the ego it can survive only in mistakes those are not even mistakes those are egos compulsions because without them it cannot survive that's humility so when somebody attacks you and you feel hurt humility lies in looking at yourself and smiling and saying, see how vulnerable I am. They are tossing nonsense at me and yet I am giving it importance. What they are saying has no ground, no foundation and yet I am taking it seriously. See how stupid I am and this is humility. You must be able to always recognize your own weaknesses and when you recognize your weaknesses you do not say they are my weaknesses you just say oh they are systematic they are biologic they are social these weaknesses and when you say thus then you can smile at them with detachment that's humility humility does not lie in surrendering to others or bowing down to others someone who cannot call a spade a spade is not humble the humble person is one who can call illusion as illusion that's what humility is about to call illusion as illusion I've always thought of humility as being able to admit when you're wrong instead of the ego which is never being wrong and which he says <laughs> the ego lies in mistakes and lies which is very true anything else on this uh, no sir uh, my all lots has been clear thank you sir <clears throat> I saw this and I was like actually that's an interesting question 
So I guess a lot of it did go back to what I said in the very beginning. Again, I, I don't pre-watch these things before I uh, I record. I watch on the spot. Don't have time to watch it twice. <laughs> Although I do have time to kind of rewind a little bit, especially some interesting parts that kind of catches my attention there. And especially if I want to hear it again to make sure I heard it correctly. But yeah. Um, so essentially, if you know who you are, you shouldn't be affected by any by any lies or even any truth because lies are lies and the truth is the truth you know you can lies are just false so you don't have to worry about that and the truth is well it's the truth and well you know it's the truth <laughs> it's pretty simple and straightforward when you under when you understand things i like to i like to keep saying that when you understand things and when people are trying to put you down with lies and stuff that means that you are above them because why else would they try to put you down? If they, if they were above you, they wouldn't have to, because they're already above you. But if they're if they're uh, if they're putting lies out there or trying to put you down, clearly you're above them. And and you know these are people with massive egos trying to keep their ego up because their ego is shrinking. Or not shrinking, but it's not. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's uh it's not doing so well. I suppose that's the right question. It's inflating so big. <laughs> and they have to keep inflating it. And to keep inflating their ego. Because they don't want it to deflate. <laughs> Anyways, that's my reaction to is self and uh, self respect important. Acharya Prashanti. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.